Welcome again, everyone. Hope lunch was good. And now we move on with Gary by talking about Ansible. Okay, thanks for your introduction. Uh, yeah, today I, I'm glad to, uh, that I can uh, talk about Ansible and an open source tool uh, that helps you in how to make your, your IT environment. Um, I will give a short overview who am I. So my name is Gerd Hittinger. Uh, I'm, I'm founder of, of Open Force. Uh, uh, yeah, we, we are sponsor of today's event. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. Basically, I'm, I'm yeah, a long time Java developer, developing Java apps since the yeah, end of the 90s. Uh, yeah, <laughs> quite a long time. Uh, for five years, I'm doing more or less uh, Scala development, uh, and I'm, I'm kind of, of system and, and, and software architecture addicted, and that's the reason why I'm, I'm doing uh, also some, some operations stuff. And uh, yeah, during during my my doings, I I come to Ansible. So basically, how did we start in the in the beginning? So we found it 2002. That's quite a, a long time ago. And uh, of course, we had our first server. Our first server was, uh, yeah, in, in, in today's terms, a, a normal machine uh, with a big server case. Uh, we, we ran uh, Linux on, on it. Uh, everything was handcrafted. Yeah? So um, we, we had no documentation. We, we don't even notice that we need a, a documentation. Um, and some day uh, the, uh, a disaster happens, uh, our server crashed. We had a hardware failure and uh, we have uh, already some customers uh, that we are, uh, we are uh, yeah, did some, some, some um, hosting on, on, on this server. Uh, yeah, that was a, 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 a big mess for us, so we had uh, to do all the, the setup again and uh, we noticed, okay, we have lost several of our, of our knowledge uh, during the, the, the years, uh, and we have uh, to, to build the server, the server setup uh, uh, again by hand. And this was, of course, uh, not a very, a very funny task because uh, we had uh, a waiting customer on the phone, and uh, and we're sitting on the on the uh, shell and try to fix the issue and set up the computer. So. How we do we proceed? Of course, we, we professionalized, uh, and, and uh, several years later, uh, we have uh, uh, several servers in our in our uh, racks and uh, about ten physical uh, hardware servers uh, hosting about uh, thirty virtual machines. And uh, uh, this time we didn't do the same the same uh, uh, failure again. We we started to to do all uh, things automatically. We, we build shell scripts. Uh, in this time, we, we started to use Puppet. I don't know if you, if you know Puppet. It's just another, another optimization framework. But uh, yeah, basically, you have to learn Ruby to use it. And uh, honestly, I don't want to, to learn a new programming language just to manage some servers for us. Um, so, uh, nevertheless, we use Puppet and we use several, several uh, uh, shared scripts, and uh, things become much better uh, than at the beginning. So, uh, at least when when a system was uh, has crashed, uh, we have uh, an automated way of rebuilding it, um, and uh, it was not that disastrous as, as it was in the beginning, but it was still not perfect. Yeah. Um, because yeah, mainly shell scripts are, are not not the best way to automate uh, um, an IT system. Where are we now? Um, now we've moved away completely from 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 hardware. Uh, we use simple infrastructure as a service by several providers. Um, now we have to. Uh, administer about 50 virtual machines, and uh, the count uh, this is uh, counting. Uh, so we expect that we we uh, have 60 or even 100 during the next uh, the next uh, year. 
So we, we had the issue that we, we cannot uh, stay with Puppet because we have uh, not that much knowledge and we don't want to be, uh, become Ruby experts. And of course, uh, shared scripts are not, the, are not the, the right tool to administer uh, uh, yeah, about 50 or 100 uh, virtual machines. So basically, handcrafted servers had, had so much mm, yeah, negative uh, negative impacts. Uh, when you in, when you handcrafted your, your server setup, uh, it's it's extremely hard to maintain. Uh, you need a lot of system administrators, operating stuff. Um, it's extremely expensive because, of course, uh, uh, you need a lot of time to to bring your your system up and running. Uh, uh, you have so much repeatable task. Uh, you have to update your software regularly, you have to set up uh, a new host uh, and uh, when you don't automate it, uh, you will do uh, failures or errors. So basically it leads to bad quality and this was, was the, the, main, um, the main issue for us because we want to deliver high quality uh, and uh, we don't want to spend much, uh, much time on, on, on system setup. Um, and of course, uh, we had some issues with documentation too, because uh, whenever you do something by hand, uh, uh, normally you just log in uh, to your server, fix a problem, forget it because it works, and you forget 99% of all cases to document it properly. So we, we, we definitely need something new. and. Uh, yeah, Ansible come to our rescue because uh, Ansible had so much uh, positive uh, uh, features uh, that that helps us. So basically, what I don't want uh, about a puppet, for example, is that you need a master server. So I don't want a server to be able to administer my servers. So uh, we want something that uh, that works on on my machine, on a laptop, or whatever we need. Uh, we don't want to install client software yeah? because uh, we don't want to, to reduce the complexity of our setup and not increase the complexity by, by needing uh, even more software. Um, and of course we don't want to learn another programming language just to administrate our server. So uh, we want uh, a simple uh, setup or simple configuration files. And Ansible gives us all that. Uh, Ansible has very, very easy to understand file structure, uh, and very few concepts uh, that you can learn in yeah, several days, um, and has a really flat learning curve. And this is the most important thing I've, uh, I, I have to, to say, because uh, when, you, when you find a, a weekend of time or, or two for, three days, uh, you will be able to do really, really advanced Ansible stuff. Um, and of course, uh, we want to code our environment. So we want to automate every single step. And we don't want any manual um, task in, in, in the complete procedure. So how Ansible, how works uh, Ansible? <coughs> Uh, what does an, an, an system administ uh, system operations guy do normally? He normally logs in via SSH, do some tasks, logs out, and uh, if it, um, uh, everything works well, the server is in a is in a good shape and and uh, uh, is doing his job. And uh, Ansible is doing exactly the same. And we don't need any new uh, software components, any new demons on the on the client side. No, no master server. Ansible just uses SSH and use uh, SSH uh, remote command execution. So this is a really great thing because uh, with SSH we get uh, the transport security, of course, uh, without any additional cost. Uh, because SSH is, of course. Uh, Secure communication, so all we all the communication between uh, the, the master server or a laptop or whatever you use, uh, and the client is uh, is uh, simply encrypted. Um, what do you need uh, 
uh, for Ansible. Very, very few things. Uh, basically, you need an inventory. Uh, an inventory is a, a list of your servers or your server platform. Basically, a list of, of, of uh, IP addresses or domain names or whatever. Uh, then you need uh, two other things, uh, playbooks. Uh, Ansible uh, scripts are called playbooks, and playbooks consist of the of the tasks, of the modules that needs to be executed on the remote side. I will give you an, an example uh, later. Uh, and then you can uh, structure your, your configuration in roles. Yeah? You can structure your uh, configuration in roles because uh, normally you have uh, common components that you need on every server. For example, if you need, um, if you need logging, and everyone needs logging. Yeah. And you want to use Logstash, for example. Yeah. You need Logstash on each and every server uh, in your farm, and of course you need a Logstash index, indexing server. Or you want a database, or you want an, an Nginx or Apache or whatever uh, web server you want to use. Um, then you can define roles for such uh, typical components, uh, for example a Logstash role, an Nginx role, and an MySQL role, or whatever. And then you can compose uh, uh, several roles in one playbook. Uh, so the, you can say, please install on this host uh, MySQL, my logstash, my nginx, and whatever. Uh, and then you have modules. Modules are uh, yeah, reusable components that are normally created by the Ansible staff. Uh, so you have, for example, a module for uh, package management for Debian, APT, or Ubuntu, and um, uh, you have roles for for MySQL setup or database setup, PostgreSQL, MongoDB, or whatever you want uh, to use. But all the all the configuration uh, is available on one single node. It can be your laptop if you want to. So you don't need uh, a master a master server for this, because uh, Ansible just takes uh, the configuration files, the playbooks, the modules, the roles, and uh, the inventory, and executes your plan on each configured server. Yeah, so simple, uh, or as simple as that. Of course, when you want a master node that uh, is responsible for distributing the uh, the configuration, uh, you can simply exchange your laptop uh, or your, your PC with, with a master host in your, uh, in your uh, server rack and uh, use it as an Ansible master. Well, one of the most important things is, is the, the inventory. The inventory consists of a list of your servers. In this uh, simple example, I have an SMTP server, two web servers, two OneDB servers, and three Elasticsearch servers. And all I need to do is uh, to, to uh, yeah, add them in the inventory. Basically, I, even, I don't even need these group names because uh, yeah, these are simple group names uh, that help you to organize your, your inventory or your, your uh, setup structure, but you don't even need this. Of course, you're not, uh, you're not required to use IP uh, addresses. You can, of course, use uh, DNS names too. So basically, uh, you can use uh, uh, your host names in, in, in a DNS form and list them in your inventory files. You, you can, of course, um, say, OK, I have, I'm a, a really uh, successful company and I have uh, 50 web servers, uh, 30 application servers, and, uh, and 20 database servers. And I don't want to write them down uh, uh, step by step. So you can also use uh, uh, enumerations in your inventory file. So when you have, uh, for example, uh, 20 web servers, you can use this uh, um, enumeration and say, okay, we have web uh, 01 to uh, web 20.openforce.com or whatever your domain name is. So you can you can make your your inventory pretty small with uh, with the usage of these um, uh, uh, enumerations. 
uh, you can assign variables to hosts. So when you need a, a special configuration for a host, you can put it uh, in the inventory file. Uh, the, the format is, is uh, just a key value pair. So in this case, I, I define a variable NTP, and uh, the domain name of the NTP server is the my value. And I can create group of groups of hosts. And this is a very important uh, possibility to organize the, uh, my configuration. So I can uh, add a group. Uh, in this case, I add a group uh, web and DB. And it contains of all my web servers and my MongoDB servers. Um, then I have the playbook. The playbook is just a simple list of, of tasks that needs to be executed on the remote side. Uh, in this uh, case, you, you see it's just a simple uh, yet another markup language file. Yeah, it's pretty simple. More or less a key value pair with, with uh, yeah, key value pairs. Uh, it's perfectly human readable because I'm, I'm pretty sure that most of you uh, are able to, to read and understand this. Yeah, in this case, um, we are we are setting up an own cloud server. Uh, we have uh, some, some uh, database uh, user information in there and a list of roles that needs to be executed. Um, the, the, the format of, of this uh, playbook files is always the same. It's pretty straightforward. So you have uh, a, a host name. Yeah, you can uh, enter the, the host name uh, or a group or a group of group. Uh, you can uh, write down how you should uh, you want to authenticate. Uh, you don't need to do all this as root. Uh, Ansible supports uh, sudo operations, so you don't need to use root as a, a remote login uh, user. You can use any username you want to. The only requirement is that the user have sudo rights on the on the target host. And then you can instruct Ansible to use the sudo command before uh, each uh, module execution. Uh, yeah, you can define variables and then a list of rows. So, how does uh, a, a task look like? And the task is uh, is uh, available in, for example, a role. Um, tasks are also also pretty simple. Uh, task execution always begins with a name command. Uh, and then, this is, this is really a uh, really shining feature, then you need to enter a description. So, in, in, this, uh, in Ansible, uh, the documentation of, of your tasks is mandatory. You cannot execute the task without naming it, without uh, giving a, a meaningful, or meaningful, uh, at least a documentation. Uh, in this case, uh, we do an, an APT. Uh, and, and package manager and even package manager uh, module call. Uh, we give it uh, a list of, of items we want to install. And uh, uh, in this case, this state is present. Uh, just means that we want to install with this single command uh, the PHP 5 uh, software stack on a target server. Yeah, pretty simple. Uh, of course, you can do a lot more, but uh, as uh, uh, the time is, uh, is is limited in this talk, um, I cannot show you every detail. You can, of course, uh, use um, uh, conditionals. You can uh, use the result sets of an of an task uh, as an as an additional uh, conditional. So you can do some error handling if a task fails or a module uh, execution fails. You can inform the user that something bad happens or uh, you can uh, you can use dependent tasks um, based on the yeah, result set uh, result of a former task. Uh, you can use uh, tagging. You can include files, so you can you can structure your your playbooks or uh, your role files. And of course, there are thousands of modules available. So I guess for each and every software component component, you will find an, uh, an, an, a module that's already written. So. I, I tell you to not write your own uh, modules before you have uh, taken a look at Google or GitHub uh, if, if someone else uh, write, uh, have, has written this module before. 
Uh, there are about, I don't know, 200 or 250 core mo modules in Ansible, uh, so it's highly probable you will find uh, uh, a, a module that you need uh, even in the, in the core distribution. And in GitHub there are thousands of, of modules. Um, the roles is, is, is the, the most important uh, uh, structural component uh, where you can, you can bring structure to your configuration. Uh, this is a, a short list of our own uh, uh, roles we are using uh, in our company. For example, we use Backup Ninja. We use, um, uh, have some bootstrapping processes uh, when we when we bootstrap a new a new server. We have some common tasks. We have, of course, Java. We have Logstash, Nginx, OwnCloud, PostgreSQL, and so on. And um, each role has its own subdirectory structure. So you have default variables. You have files that you can upload. Uh, you have tasks, you have templates. Templates is another uh, very important feature because uh, you can use some, some templating and, and, and variable substitution in, in your templates for configuration files you want to upload to your target host. And of course you have uh, variables you can define. Um, how does this behind, work behind the scenes? Well, basically, uh, the first task Ansible does is, is it covers facts on the target host. So the first thing is uh, it looks at the target host and checks what packages are installed, what, I, what is the IP address, what is the domain name, uh, how much memory do I have, what's the, don't know, uh, free space on this device. Uh, and these facts are checked against the task list. Yeah? And Ansible is uh, so clever that it only performs the tasks that are not already done on the remote server. So, for example, if you if you call uh, the uh, package module and say, "Okay, please install a MySQL server on, on my remote host," and uh, Ansible has in the gathering uh, fact phase uh, detected that MySQL is already installed, it just ignores the, uh, this task. So because it says, okay, it's already installed, I don't overwrite it. Um, so you can, you can think of it as a, a kind of rsync. I don't know if you know rsync. It's a thing you can uh, synchronize, uh, synchronize to, to uh, file systems. Uh, on, on it's still from the 90s, oh? It's, oh, sorry, it's from the 90s. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a 70s guy, so I... Yeah, I know all this stuff. <laughs> uh, so basically, it makes a, a diff uh, and, and just executes um, only the, the tasks that, that are really needed to be executed. And, this is, and the most important uh, thing is why all this uh, works is all tasks are and need to be in depotent. Yeah? So you can always repeat it like in a hamster wheel. You can always repeat the same configuration. Ansible will never destroy you a working uh, configuration because if it would overwrite something, uh, it uh, simply don't uh, do this. Yeah, there's so much more that I could uh, tell you about Ansible. Uh, some some really advanced and, and interesting stuff. So of course, when you have a really really uh, big uh, number of hosts, for example, tens of thousands. Uh, there are uh, dynamic uh, inventories uh, when you're using um, uh, background or uh, AWS. Uh, there uh, is a special support for, for uh, that kind of services or cloud services in general. There is this Ansible Galaxy. Uh, the Ansible Galaxy is uh, a repository where you can find uh, hundreds and thousands of, of, of modules. Uh, so. I hope I give you a, a short but, but good introduction to this uh, topic uh, and, and, and I hope I, uh, I make you curious about the tool and I can uh, recommend uh, to spend some, some hours uh, in reading the basic documentation. The documentation is excellent by the way. Uh, you can, um, uh, you can uh, maybe start with, with the best practices uh, documentation part because uh, it's pretty short, it's about, yeah, I don't know, 10, 10 pages or so, and after this you have a really, really good feeling about how you structure your, your configuration and how you set up your 
hopefully successful uh, running uh, company uh, in using thousands of machines to serve your customers. So thank you for your attention. Uh, if you have any more questions, uh, I will uh, be here all the, uh, the, the noon and uh, of course you can always contact me and ask me whatever you want to know. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned Wavefront. Mm -hmm. Was here the connection using uh, Ansible to provision your mm -hmm. Wavefront VMs? Exactly. The question is, uh, what uh, what is the, the, the relationship between Ansible and Wavefront? Uh, yes, uh, you can simply use uh, uh, Ansible as a an provisioning uh, module in Wavefront. So uh, basically, two others, Puppet and Chef, and uh, and Ansible is the third uh, candidate you can use. Is it also interesting for using it together with Docker? Um, it's experimental. So the Ansible community is 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 uh, is uh, trying to figure out how this should support Docker and how they can support Docker. Uh, it's not a first-class citizen at the moment, but I'm sure they will they will take it up. Mm. So it's open source, right? Yeah. It was bought by Red right Hat, like right to us, like, Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are there any limitations with the open source solution? No. I know there's, for example, there's Tower, mm -hmm. which is, I don't yeah. even know what it does, but mm -hmm. it's like, it's a central, it's again a central, uh, mod, a central system component mm -hmm. which uh, makes Ansible act more like Papa and Chef. Right? Mm -hmm. like, so, you have this, so Ansible is more a push kind mm -hmm. of way of doing it, and Papa and yeah. Chef is holding it with the yeah. Yeah. Are there? Okay. So do you see it as a solution for for a small company, or is it scalable as well to? Okay, that's uh, pretty much questions. <laughs> so, <I try> to <laughs> so, um, so uh, is Ansible open source? Yes, it is. It's, it was uh, acquired, or basically the company behind Ansible, that Ansible Inc., uh, was acquired by Red Hat a month ago. Yeah, it's true. Uh, um, it remains open source. Red Hat has uh, committed fully support of the open source edition, and uh, they will don't as if they won't uh, do any any crippling or, or any, any 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 shortening of the open source uh, version. This was a major a major part of the deal with Ansible because Ansible wanted to be able to to give the the product away as an open source uh, product. Um, and uh, how good does it scale? Was was the last question? Um, it depends. Um, yes, it's a push, uh, a push um, uh, philosophy. Uh, so, an, an, an server or your laptop is actively pushing the, con uh, the, uh, the configuration to all, all your hosts. Um, yes, it's case because there are some some efforts and some some um, uh, some yeah additional modules. Uh, so that you can parallelize uh, the way uh, you're distributing the, uh, the configuration. Normally it's uh, true that uh, uh, it, the, the configuration is distributed uh, in sequence uh, from one server then the next server and the next server. And of course if you have thousands of servers this would, uh, wouldn't uh, uh, scale, but there is an, an additional module where you can do parallel execution on all your servers and there are setups uh, uh, that I know of not uh, at, uh, doing the administration of it, but I know it uh, from the community. Uh, so they serve about yeah, 10,000 to 20,000 uh, hosts, and this is pretty, pretty big, big enough for me at least. Last question. Did you also use the Windows integration of Ansible? No. No. Also, <laughs> should I think no. it's stable? <laughs> uh, I don't even have to take a look at it. Uh, I cannot uh, give any, any any information of that. We we use it on on um, all our Linux uh, servers and uh, Macs, uh, but don't have tried out the, the Windows support. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.